Okay. Okay. So what I'd like to uh, go over with you, um, especially for uh, Megan and Sierra, is now how to classify triangles. Now, a lot of this information, ladies and gentlemen, we, you, you've probably already gone over, but I want to go back over it again, um, or just to make sure clarify with everybody. All right, classifying triangles. Okay, so what we're going to do is classifying triangles by their angles. Okay. So what we're going to do is be classifying triangles by their angles. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at three different types of triangles that we can have, or actually four different. Now, if I have a triangle that has three angles, and each one of those angles is acute, meaning the measure of those angles, walk that way. OK, I know, but walk that way. If they have three angles, right? Perfect. The three angles are going to be acute. That can mean they're going to be less than 90 degrees. And they're not equal to each other. Notice how each one of those is different. One has one tick mark, two tick marks, three tick marks. OK? This is what we call an acute triangle. So when it has three acute angles that are not equal in measure, that is what we call an acute triangle. Now, it's also possible for us to have three acute angles that are equal in measure. right? For in this case, we could have one that's 60, 60, 60. So therefore, if it has three acute equal angles, you must be having trouble over there, huh? Okay. If you have three acute equal angles, this is what we call equal angular. equal angular. Then if we have a triangle that has an obtuse angle. Now I'm going to ask this very, very important question. Um, hmm, dun, 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 dun. Ashley, do you think it's possible? for a triangle to have more than one obtuse angle? No? Why not? What is the definition of an obtuse angle? The measure of the angle has to be what? More than 90 degrees. So let's pretend this angle is 100 degrees, right? So if it has another obtuse angle, that means I have to add another angle that's larger than 90, correct? But what is the sum of all angles in a, a all interior angles of a triangle? Close. Knock it down one. Triangle. Quadrilateral is 360 because it is composed of two triangles. So a triangle, the measure of all the interior angles is starts with a one, ends with an 80. 180, right? So now Ashley, think about it. Slow down, it's okay. If you have an angle that's 100, and I need to add another angle that has to be larger than 90, is it possible for me to add two obtuse angles that are smaller that add up to 180, right? Because all three angles have to add up to 180. If I already have an angle that's 100, and I have to add another angle that's larger than 90, is it possible for me to do that? No. So Jake, when you're writing this down, if you have one obtuse angle, we call it an obtuse triangle. All right. Yeah? Well, that's what I was just explaining. And that's why when you're throwing that paper ball, you probably missed our conversation. Because the question that I was asking, Jake, is if you have one obtuse angle, right, that means it's larger than 90 degrees. If I added another angle that was larger than 90 degrees, let's pretend this is 100 degrees. 
Is it possible for me to add another angle that's larger than 90? Couldn't it be 91 and 91? Sure, 91 and 91 is 180 to 2. What is the measure of all the angles in a triangle, though? But you understand it, though, now. The last one is when we have an angle that has that nice little box or is equal to 90 degrees. All right? And if you guys remember, we can do not assume that you have a right angle unless you have a figure that has that box in it. All right? Um, unless it has that, that box in it um, to show for that's 10, that tells you that's 90 degrees. So therefore, if you have a triangle like this, we know that this is um, going to be a 1 right angle. Remember, right angle is equal to 90 degrees. So therefore, we call this a right triangle. And this is going to be the most important triangle that we're going to be using this year. We're going to be using right triangles a lot. Remember, right triangles tell us if we can use Pythagorean theorem. Right? A triangle has to be a right triangle for us to use Pythagorean theorem. And we're going to use it a lot for some other um, examples as well. But therefore, that's how we classify triangles by determining their angles. All right? Sarah, yeah. could you um, move up?